Spiritual growth is this. I am conscious of all my weaknesses, of all my failures. But I know that my God will always turn it in the end for my good. And I depend on Him. For everything I depend on Him. I can do nothing without Him. The opposite of this is, you know what? The opposite of it is, I know my problems, my weaknesses, and I feel so guilty and condemned, and no one is there for me, and God is also not there, and no one is there. And when your attitude is like this towards the Lord, your attitude towards others is also like this. You feel that they don't understand you, you are hard on them because you are hard on the Lord first. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So do you understand what I mean yesterday when I told you, this Lent is a different Lent. This Lent is a Lent when I change my mind about my idea of God. Not a stern God as the Israelites felt. He's a stern God meant to be kept only in the temple. On the contrary, he's a loving dad who wants to walk with you at all times. He walks with you. You begin experiencing him. Even in your darkest hour, you begin experiencing him. Him telling you. Him telling you, I'm with you. I love you still. In the words of Jesus yesterday, your eyes, oh my God, your eyes are so beautiful like the dove's eyes. And yesterday, I forgot to tell you, she was wearing a veil. Huh? She was wearing a veil. On her head, the bride. In the Song of Songs. So a veil covers a lot of things. Correct, no? And Jesus did not mention anything about what she was covering. We also cover a lot of things in our life from God. Do you know that? We show one picture outside, but inside is a different picture. Sometimes our home people know who we really are. Outside we show another picture. It's all hidden behind a veil. But Jesus did not say, Hey, what is under your veil? He looked straight to the eyes. How beautiful are your eyes? Like a dove's eyes. That's how God is. He doesn't look at your weaknesses. He says, I still, you, you're, my, you're the object of my beauty, of my love still. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me check your Bible knowledge. At least two occasions. The father said openly, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased to Jesus. Which were these two occasions? Come on. Huh? Baptism. And? What was the word said? Please repeat with me. This is my beloved son. Do you know the first time it was said, was said where? At the? Baptism where? Do you know in not only Jordan, that place where the Jordan is, where the baptism point is, is the lowest point in Israel, about 14,000 feet. 14,000 feet is lowest point on earth. It's the lowest point on earth where the Jordan is and the place of baptism. Which is the second place he said? Mount Tabor is the highest place, 10,000 feet. At the lowest point in your life, God looks and says to you, you're my beloved son. And you're covered all with sin and you don't know how to come out of it. And you feel, oh my God, I failed everyone including God. Shh. Shh. You're my beloved. You know, God cannot say it more clearly than this. And when you're doing very well, topmost mountain, 10,000 feet above sea level. <laughs> you're my beloved son. In the best moments and the worst moments of your life, Daddy God says, you're my beloved son. I love you. Nothing can change my love for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> then why is it that I cannot... You know, Jacob in the Bible was dying. And when he was dying, 
he told all his 12 sons to come. He wanted to bless them. And the eldest son was Reuben. Reuben. And you know, during that time, the eldest son always got double of everything. So if the other sons got 10 rupees, the eldest son would get 20 rupees. And if the other children, other sons, got 5,000 square meters of land, the eldest would get 10,000. The eldest son was always blessed. He was meant to have double. And Reuben was the eldest. And Jacob put his hand on him to bless him and said, Reuben, you are my eldest son. You should have got double. You should have got everything. But, he said, but you made a mistake of going to bed with Billa. Who is Billa? Billa was one of the slave girls of Jacob's wife. Jacob's wife, Rachel, had a slave girl by the name of Billah. And uh, he went to bed with her. And uh, the moment he went to bed, he committed sin. And now Jacob was saying, this is the mistake you made. You went to bed with Billah. That is why whatever was promised by God is being lost on you. I searched because, you know, in Hebrew language, the names always have a special meaning. And to my shock, I found out Billah means getting afraid, fear, terror. Which means, in other words, he was saying to him, Reuben, you went to bed with fear and terror. That is why you lost whatever God had in mind for you. Hello, does it tell you something? We lose several things because we are captured by fear. Do you know, by the way, the sexual act is such, the two become one. It's like, you know, a piece of paper you take in this hand and you take another piece of paper in this hand and you put gum for both the papers and you join it together and keep it out there in the sun and after some time you try to separate the papers you will not be able to separate it and even if you succeed there will be pieces of this on that and pieces of that on this I think you have had the experience of it the sexual act is like that that's why always sexual sin St. Paul said, of all sins affects your body and affects you. You're sinning against your own body. And sometimes, when we commit sexual acts, the spirit of one passes to the other. Do you know that? That's why often you will see, even between husband and wife, maybe when they get married, the wife is a very bitter and revengeful and unforgiving person. But the husband is a good guy. Eh? He is very forgiving and very... But you see, after some years, with the transfer of spirits, the husband also starts becoming bitter and unforgiving. The two become one. And so it is even. When we go to prostitutes, we go to others, their spirits come to us as our spirits go to them. As much as the two pages, of, pages are fixed with gum, it cannot be separated. The spirits pass. That's why years later, even in the renewal, you're in the renewal, but you'll still feel certain things haunting you. And what is required is real deliverance by the blood of Jesus from all those things, because those spirits have passed. Now Reuben, the eldest, he went to bed with Billah, which means fear. Which means he got stuck to fear so much that fear became part of him. Many of us are also going to bed even today, little today with Billah, with fear. We fear about this, fear about that, fear about this. What happens? As a result, we lose, we sink. Yesterday I told you about Simon Peter walking on the water. Correct now? Then at one point what happens? He starts thinking about the wind. Crazy, no? I told you yesterday. What is the wind to do with walking on the water? Nothing. Even our thinking becomes corrupted, our reasoning becomes corrupted. And fear came. 
in which means that Simon Peter went to bed with Villa at that moment. And what happened? Started sinking. The moments when you start sinking are when you go to bed with fear, with Billa. Just imagine, Jacob was saying, Reuben, you are the eldest, you should have got the blessing. But you went to bed with fear. And as a result, you were so unstable all the time. Maybe you show them. Genesis chapter 49. You are unstable as water. You shall no longer excel because you went up to your father's bed. You defiled it. You went unto my couch. Look at the word unstable. Unstable all the time. Good at the prayer meetings after that. Good in the morning after mass after that. Good on Thursdays because it is the prayer meeting day after that. Unstable. Just imagine. If he had not given in to fear, this man would have received double his portion, which means that Everywhere you see, Jesus is come from the line of Judah. It would have been Jesus has come from the line of Reuben. Do you realize that? The line of Reuben would have prevailed. Today the Bible would have been written differently. Not Judah, Judah, Judah everywhere. It would have been Reuben, 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 Reuben. Jesus. The descendant of Reuben would have been there. But he lost it. Though he was entitled to it, he lost it because he went to bed with fear. He went to bed with terror, calamity. The meaning of Billa is terror, calamity. Why this fear? Why this worry? That's why man by nature is an expert at two things. Remember, the first thing. He wants to know when. Man is an expert at asking God always, when it will happen? When you will do it? And did I tell you about the lady who came to me for counseling one day? Brother, my husband is friendly with a Muslim woman and he's with her and he's no longer staying with us and this and that. We met her in the office and this and that. And then I sat with her and gave her a whole retreat, almost two hours. How you need to change your life. You are a Christian, you are a Catholic, but a namesake Catholic. You have not experienced God. You need to come closer to God, draw near to God. Experience Him as your Father. All these outward things will not help you. He said, brother, I am making a retreat now and I am going to change my life. I made up my mind. You have convinced me that my Catholic life was wrong. I thought going for mass and doing a few things outside activity enough. But now I've realized the most important is to come near. And she got up and I was happy also. She went. And then she came back. And says, brother, just one question, don't mind. Even if, if I do this and change my life, how long it will take? <laughs> how long for my husband to come back? You understand? When expert at this, when? Even if we don't say it by mouth, because brother may quote us someday, inside it is always when. Mera number kabaega. Kabaega mera number. Such an, it is within us, you know that. That's why Jesus is ascending into heaven. Last, last his disciples are seeing. That time they asked him, Lord, at this time will we get the kingdom? Kingdom will be given to us. Look at that. Huh? Acts chapter 1. When the apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom to us? Look at this, man. We are so preoccupied with time. When, 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 when it will happen? And see the answer of Jesus. He said, The times and occasions are set by my father's authority. It is not for you to know that. Don't worry your head about when it will happen, when it will happen. That's why I always tell people the best way to get out of tension is simply assume it will never happen. Put it in your mind, it will never happen. It will happen only if it is in God's plan. Otherwise it will not happen. It will give you so much amount of peace and change your attitude. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And why this question about when, when? Because of what I told you earlier, I feel this is best for me. So, can I that link? I can I? Can I? Are Papa? Who can sing that? Tuka, tiam bore mon tuka. What brother? I'm not asking for anything sinful, huh? Everyone has it. Why I should not? Same question that Simon Peter asked on the river that night. Now, God knew this man would not have been the first pope if He had given him fish that night. God knew better than what Simon Peter thought He knew. Put that in your mind, even if you forget anything that you have heard at these prayer meetings. Put that in your mind. Print it and seal it in your mind. God at all times knows what is better, what is best for me. He knows much better than what I know. What is best for me, I think I know. But God knows much better than me. My wisdom is nothing compared to His. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another occasion they ask, Lord, what will be the signs for the end times? When, when it will take place? <laughs> Today a lot of people are into that. When, when, when the world will come to an end? When, when? Huh? Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says like this. He has set the right time for everything. He has given us the desire to know the future. But never gives us the satisfaction of fully understanding what he does. The way he works, he doesn't give. It is only when you come into a close relationship with him. Hello, listen to this. That you suddenly understand how his mind works. And therefore, what is his timing? His timing becomes your timing. Gone are the days of restlessness and when, 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 when. Let it happen whenever it happens, if it is to happen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need to change. The real problem is with our head. You understand that? No. Did I show you yesterday? That the Lord appreciated eyes and hair and teeth. Everything belongs to the head. The real problem with us is this head of ours. And some of us have really big ones. Cannot accept. It all depends on me. No? And that's the second thing which man is an expert in. Huh? He feels it all depends on him. Everything depends on me. Everything depends on me. That's why later, even in religious life, we think that the more I pray, I'll say 40 Hail Marys today, 100 Hail Marys. I'll say 200 half others and God will give it. Have you seen the papers sometimes? Have you seen the papers? Say this prayer ten times and definitely it will be done. God grants for faith, no? But when you make it a formula, say that and done. Then it becomes, it all depends on me. See? Even religious life becomes, it all depends on me. I tell you, all things are achieved. You just sit patiently looking at the cross or looking at Jesus in the blessed sacrament. You're looking straight at him. You don't have to speak anything. That's why you find people getting more benefits when they constantly just look at Jesus. They're not doing anything. They're doing rubbish, man. People will laugh at them. What are you doing, man, sitting there? But they know what they're doing because faith tells them God wants us to look at him in the same way as we, he looks at us. He needs us to say in our heart, this is my beloved God who has never failed me and will never fail me. This is my beloved God who has never failed me and will never fail me. And then we hear automatically him saying, whether in the lowest or the highest position of our life, you are my beloved son, daughter with whom I am well pleased. Therefore relationship, hello, relationship, closeness, not mount of prayers. Others we can get into our mind, the more I kneel, no? Then it produces so much of guilt. I saiba, today I got up, three times I to do like this, I skurun kuna, I skitam white zatale, see? Our religious life becomes this. Because we think it all depends on that.
ब्रादर कि संगा तो मीस कर सदांच हम जेना फ्लैक को दिमी मोटा करूंक ना ब्रादर चार दीस तक दिता सोले वाइट जो आगो बाय तुझो तुझो बाप को बोडी घेन रहा पोपा देफे मार्च दाखिले डाम कर माले दिस इज द पिक्चर यू हैव इन योर माइंड अबाउट योर फादर आगो डाम को मारपी बापू अपू पुता धाटा डाम को घपा पास आनोच बापू देफे का 